A couple of weeks ago, guys, the BattleBit developers once again took to Twitch and Discord for another dev cast, giving us more and more insight into this ever elusive game update that we are just continuing to wait for. And while the wait continues to test the community's patience, I figured that we might as well go over all of the details we have in front of us and what it all means. G'day there once again, viewers, your mate Kamikaze78 here, and today we've got even more insights around this next game update for BattleBit to talk about and strap in because once again, this is a big one. So guys, the biggest ticket item out of that whole dev stream was undoubtedly the announcement of the game's time to kill being adjusted from top to bottom, which is aiming to move it from an average of 200 to 300 milliseconds to an average of 400 milliseconds as a baseline. Now, this is something that we talked about in great detail already in our previous video, getting into why the changes were actually a good thing and all that fun stuff. So if you're keen on that video and you haven't seen it yet, then you can check it out linked in the top right of your screen now or linked in the description. But with that big news there sort of stealing the spotlight, there's also been some other massive changes discussed that I feel a lot of people are just completely sweeping under the rug at the moment. And funnily enough, some of which actually work in favour of the time to kill changes being a good thing too. More specifically, I want to draw our attention to the movement nerfs that developers showed off in the recent dev cast here. As of this next update, turning 180 degrees will lead to your movement being cut down and a sense of inertia kicking in that will require you to regain your momentum. This is not going to have an impact on zigzagging behavior and is mainly designed to address players being able to flin themselves around at insane speeds and angles here, especially while mid-air. It's a pretty simple nerf here, guys. I, for one, have always enjoyed the slightly faster movement speed in BattleBit and the things that it lets you do as a skilled player, but I am also one to admit that the 180 degree turns on a dime with no warning felt very cheesy at times. Now, in my view, there's still a skill gap that can be exploited through the movement system of BattleBit after this nerf, and I truly believe that that needs to remain in some capacity, but I also think this is a very important step in finding that middle ground here to ensure that players aren't twirling like a ballerina every time they take fire and, you know, winning in those situations where they shouldn't be. Now, I can't find footage of it here today, but I also remember seeing at one point a prone speed nerf coming to the game as well, which is designed to make it more of a two-stage animation approach and also nerf drop shotting in the game. Happy for people to confirm or deny that in the comment section down below. Again, I remember seeing something like that, but I can't find the footage for myself in today's video. So again, let me know in the comment section down below if you can confirm or deny that. Now, in addition, armor is changing its place in the game completely here to become an entirely cosmetic element of your loadout. Going forward, the armor that you pick will not affect your effective HP and will instead be something that you use to visually customize your character and maybe affect your magazine carrying capacity and mobility speed. That second point there at the end was never explicitly confirmed by the developers in the dev cast, but was more alluded to based on some of the language that they were using, but that could have honestly just been semantics and nothing was truly meant by it. But anyways, confirmed without question, armor is no longer going to provide any kind of benefit or buff to your HP as of this next update. Now, in some capacity, I know that people are viewing this as a big old nerf to some of the classes in the game, and also a simplification of one of the game's unique elements that made it, you know, battle bit. And it's a tough one, guys. The developers did give us more insight into their rationale, which is basically the following. As it was currently designed, armor held no benefit outside of the first firefight you got into, because once you lost it in the exchange of that firefight, there was no way to bring it back, which limited its ongoing benefit it brought to your class. And on top of that, if they wanted to add a means for you to resupply said armor in battle, that it would represent another resource for players to manage on top of their core HP in a game that's already relatively fast paced. And look, to be honest with you guys, I can very much agree with the mentality there and the reservations the developers have around, you know, adding another resource to manage. They have a very good point here. Having to manage two resources, being HP and armor, in a game like this is going to feel tedious for very little benefit, at least a benefit that you've got to manage constantly. And on top of that, armor does add incredible inconsistency to the time to kill of this game and how many rounds it actually takes to put someone down. That inconsistency in of itself has been a frustration point for a lot of players in the past. And opting to normalize time to kills in the game while also lengthening the baseline time to kill should achieve the same effect that armor had in the first place, but it's going to ensure that that effect of armor is felt 
throughout your entire lifespan and between engagements that you face. As a counterbalance to that, and to ensure that the heftier classes like the support class still hold an identity in the game, the developers are intending to give each class a different base HP value. Basically, it's going to normalize how much effective HP each class will have in the game, but also make classes like support a bit tankier and giving them that staying power as an immovable object that they've always sort of, you know, filled as a role in the game. Now, once again, this is something that's actually going to work in favor of the time to kill overhaul and its goals here. Ultimately, the support class is now going to have what is essentially baked in exo armor that will always be present on your character as long as you're alive and healed up to max HP, which again is going to provide a lot more consistency to the players of the support class and also to players versing them trying to you know shoot them they'll have a better idea as to how many bullets it's going to take every time to sink one down which again i think are great steps in the right direction and i can see their thinking here i was hesitant at first but i actually like where this is going now there is an argument to be made for there being inconsistency in time to kills and a sense of you know targets not going down because you've got different hp values for different classes that may cause some confusion well to get around that the developers are also adding health bars to the ui of the game on a successful hit of a target only as a means to indicate as to how much damage you're actually doing and how many more bullets it's going to take to, you know, finish off the job. And the point of this is to add feedback to the game's gameplay that eliminates the sensation of, are my bullets actually doing any damage? Now, as we said, this effect will only activate on a successful hit on a target, and it will also disappear immediately after if you stop hitting them. So it's not going to be this intrusive element of the UI like many thought it would be. The change here is to ensure that new players actually get the feedback they need to understand that, yes, they are hitting people, they're doing damage, their rounds are working, and ultimately, this is how much more they need to do to secure those kills. For the immersion lovers in the community who are not happy that these, you know, UI changes are coming, you will be able to to turn this off in the settings should you wish to do so but realistically speaking this is not going to be an intrusive element on the game's gameplay the developers are also looking at adding light suppression and flinch mechanics for shots that land nearby your player on first impression the bullet impact hits themselves look very strong and i will need some hands-on time with these new effects to work out if i like them or not because again on first impression Part of me worries that they're going to be incredibly intrusive and that we're about to see, you know, aim punch to electric boogaloo come into the game here with Battlebit. And honestly, I don't really want to see that come to the game, but only time will tell there. Again, I don't really like the idea of the game becoming, you know, visually cluttered and unclear if you do copper hit, especially given how much action can be condensed into a small area in Battlebit thanks to its match sizes. But we also got a brief look at some of the visual changes that are coming to the game as well, namely ambient occlusion. We got a nice side-by-side -side graphic of the effect in action here, and once again, this is just a nice little visual improvement to the game that helps to bring it a bit more into that modern yet low-poly look, you know? Just because it's low-poly doesn't mean it needs to be bland to look at, and this kind of depth coming to the game definitely helps to, you know, add a bit more value to the visual experience of playing Battlebit. I personally really like the small level of detail it does bring to the table, and I'm keen to see how it looks in more situations across the game. It may even help with identifying targets against backgrounds in some situations as well, but we'll see, I guess. And on top of that, the developers are also turning their attention to the lighting and weather effects of each map as well. And look, the vibrancy of the new lighting in combination with the ambient occlusion, the updated models and all that fun stuff has really given the game a general uplift that looks kind of stunning in my view, at least for a game that is, you know, low poly in nature. The Tense Town update that's on your screen right now as well really grounds the color palette of the map and it kind of rids it of that orangey slash magenta hue that the map seems to have right now. And that more grounded lighting, I think, really makes the map pop in a new way. We're also getting a pool of weather effects that can occur on each map with a weighted chance of them occurring at random. And that's, look, you know, kind of cool to see. It's nothing really game breaking, nothing that's going to revolutionize the game like a lot of the gameplay changes that are coming. But it does add some more variety to the visuals, which again is nice to see. The devs also hinted at some more cosmetics in the form of new weapon ghillie suits, as well as some weapon shards that can be equipped, which I imagine come as a result of completing challenges in game. And we also got to look at the brand new explosion effects that are coming to the game, which do look fantastic, I must say, by comparison to what we have now. And as part of an accidental segue, the developers showed us basically how the updated destruction model for the game is going to look. It will see things like RPGs, C4, and explosives in general, taking less chunks out of buildings and leaving smaller holes in walls, but it's still going to be impactful overall. 
The idea of the change was to make sure that, you know, destruction while being prevalent in the game didn't turn every single map it touched into an apocalyptic site by the end of the match and ensure that there was more cover for players to abuse still as matches moved on. Which again, I'm all for. While destruction is cool in games like this, it's very important to ensure that your players still have ample cover to romp around in and to actually, you know, play in as part of the map. Battlebit doesn't really have that once buildings go down completely, so having these destruction nerfs in there overall is still going to allow destruction to have a role to play, but it's not going to be a matter of, you know, you shoot an RPG at a wall and the entire side of the building flies off. It's going to be a bit more nuanced in that way. Now, those are all the major headliners of the update, guys. Now, it's very clear to me that as this update has continued to receive work and as, you know, we've continued to see more and more about what is actually coming within the scope of the update, I can't help but think, man, as cool as the update is, and as cool as it is that they're changing so much and the game is going to feel brand new essentially when we get our hands on the update, this is Scope Creep 101. We've got to remember this update kicked off originally as an audio update, an update to revitalize the game's audio profile, and that was it. Then it soon moved into an audio and animation update because, you know, in order to sync up your audio, you need to make sure your animations are in tow and that kind of expansion of scope made sense. But now we're talking about new maps. We're talking about weather systems on current maps. We're talking about updates to the graphical fidelity of the game. We're talking about a complete and total revitalization of the game's time to kill system. We're talking about updates to weapon models, updates to progression systems, the works. Battlebit will be a brand new game as of this update. And truth be told, I'm surprised it's not going to be marketed as update 1.0, the release out of the early access for Battlebit Remastered. Because it feels like that much is changing to warrant a 1.0, you know, full launch out of early access update here, right? But the problem with that, man, is that again, we have still been waiting so many months for this update to come out, right? The comments section of most of my videos indicate that people feel like this game is abandoned where now, that it's been completely ditched by the developers and that they've run off with their hard-earned money and called it a day. Which is obviously not the case here, at least I don't think that's the case based on what we're seeing from these dev casts here, but people have got a point. It feels that way because the scope of this update continues to change and we continue to try and tackle more and more things. And in my view, the developers need to stop doing new things now and just punch on with what they've got. Focus on finishing the things that are here now, get the update out, and then move on to new, smaller projects that they can keep up with in regards to pace. As I said at the start of the video, the patience of the community is wearing thin, and I dare argue the trust is falling into that category now as well. Everything I'm seeing from this update looks okay. It looks good in some places, and I'm looking forward to getting my hands on it and seeing how Battlebit plays as a result. But man, if we keep tacking on new things to tackle to this update and keep pushing the scope out, then we're going to never see this update launch at the end of the day. This needs to come out soon, and the scope needs to be locked in with where we are right now. Get this stuff done first, then start looking at new stuff in the near future. But folks, I figured I'd throw in that little rant on the end of the video for those who have gotten this far. And if you have done so, I really appreciate you guys sticking it out. If you enjoyed the video, backhand the like button as it does go a long way to supporting the channel. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. We are doing a lot of first person shooter game coverage at the moment between Battlebit, X Defiant. I'm planning on getting into a couple of other first person shooter games really soon as well. And I'm keen to have you guys along for that journey. My Twitch link is also in the description down below, guys. So feel free to come check out our live streams should you be interested. It'd be great to have you part of that community as well. But for now, guys, that's going to be it for today's video. And until next time, I hope you guys have a good one. Peace out, guys. See you in the next one. Have a good one.